Hello everyone and welcome to another R video tutorial. And in this tutorial we're going to cover some of the important parts of R Studio and some of the useful um, tabs and, and sort of built-in functions that make it a really important IDE for R. So when you first open R Studio, you're going to see something that looks very similar to this. It will have the version of R that you're currently reading into R Studio, and it'll have three panes with some tabs in each pane. Um, by default, it opens to the console, environment, and plots tab. And I would say for most cases, these are going to be the three most useful tabs for you. There are a couple of other tabs we're going to talk about, but by and large, this is, this is a good default. So before we do anything with any of the tabs, I want to show you how you actually put R code into R Studio. And there's really three ways you can go about doing that. The first is with the console, which pops up by default. And this works just like the other R consoles that you've seen in the past, where you can type code in and it will execute it um, as soon as you hit enter. So if we type in one plus one, if we hit enter, you'll see that it immediately executes that line of code and gives us two, which is what we would expect. And we can generate variables in here. So we can say var equals happy. And if we hit enter here, you'll see that it executes that code. And you'll also, if you're paying attention, notice that over here, it's popped something up in this environment tab up here. So the environment tab keeps track of everything you have access to in this R Studio um, session. So the environment tab keeps track of all your variables. So if they are just a single um, piece of information, not a structure, they'll appear under the values. So it'll tell you the name, it'll tell you what is actually being assigned to it. So that's the first way that you can um, execute R code and a brief introduction to the environment tab. The other way that you can execute R code is if you actually go up here to File and New File, and you'll see that there's a whole bunch of different types of scripts that you can put into R Studio, and some of them aren't even R. <laughs> but if you want to run R code, you really are going to want to focus on either this first one, this R script, or we're going to talk a lot about R Markdown. Um, but we're going to start with the R script because it's the most standard way of doing this. So you'll see that when you do that, we've split this pane in half, and we now have an R script embedded into the top half of the R Studio console. And what makes this so nice, as opposed to running the console down here, is that it works just like the other um, R documents that you've worked with in the past where we can actually type multiple lines of code without having the console execute them immediately. So it allows us to build things like loops and more complicated structures, um, all in a almost like a notepad or note, uh, notepad plus plus setting. The other nice thing about using R Studio and using this um, R script is that we get something called syntactic highlighting. And if you're not familiar with syntactic highlighting, what syntactic highlighting does is it tells you at a glance what sorts of things you have in your code. And that may not make sense right away, but I'm going to show you some examples so you'll see um, what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and start by typing in a variable name. We're going to call it var2. If we hit equal sign, Let's go ahead and make this equal to an, into a numeric data value. So we'll do, say, 35. Sorry, 35. So it may be kind of hard to tell here, but what our studio has done is it's actually color-coded this. So the variable name is black, but the numeric value that we were assigning to it is actually a dark blue. So that's one way syntactic highlighting works. And we can see that even um, more clearly if we do a string. So we have happy down there. Let's do days. All right, so this is, this is stark, vis starkly visible, the syntactic highlighting here. As again, the variable name is black, but the string or the characters is a uh, green color. 
And you'll notice that as you go through and you do different things in our studio, you'll see different colors pop up that mean different things. And it's just a really good way to sort of quickly scan through your document and see what sorts of things you're dealing with. So the nice thing here is that with our, with the, uh, our script here, is that you can pass individual lines of code to the console to run, or you can execute it all at once. So if we wanted to run this var2, what we can do is we can put our cursor on the, on the line, so you see how it's that flashing vertical line here. That means that our, that our cursor's current position is on line 1, which is designated over here. If you hit control and enter, you'll see down here that it popped up in the console and then it executed. And you'll see over here we now have added an additional um, variable to our environment tab over here. So let's say that we added some more stuff, say var4 equals another variable, then var5 equals uh, the number 144. All right. So if we wanted to run all of these lines of code, what you can do is you can go over here and you can click run, and you'll see that it ran the most recent line of code. If you click, if you highlight it all, and you hit control enter or click run, you'll see that it runs all the lines of code. It ran var2, var3, var4, and var5, and you'll see that it's updated over here in the environments tab. The third way that you can interact with our code in our studio is through what's called our markdown. So if you go to file, new file, and our markdown, you'll see that it loads up in our markdown and we're going to talk a lot more about our markdown later so I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about this now. But essentially, our markdown, which we'll click OK here, our markdown is an interactive way of dealing with our code that utilizes latex in the background, and you can knit, called knitting up here, you can knit it to different types of documents that helps you share your work. Um, and again, we're going to talk a lot more about our markdown specifically in later videos, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it right now, but I just want to make you aware that um, our markdown is another quick way to be able to interact with uh, our code. So just to recap what we've talked about, with our studio, there are several tabs. We'll talk more about these tabs in another video. But there's a lot of different tabs and a lot of different functionality in our studio. And when you want to interact with code in our studio, you have the option of typing it directly down here into the console. You have the, the option of using an R script which you can run various pieces of chunks of code, or you can use our markdown, which we're going to talk about in its own video series. Hopefully this made sense. If you have any questions, I encourage you to pause, go back, rewatch the parts you're confused about, and as always, please reach out. Thank you.